a number of years ago, I uh, had just landed in the airport at uh, Port-au-Prince. And uh, Joseph, a good friend of mine, a colleague of mine, had just picked me up. And uh, as we started driving through the streets of Port-au-Prince, I noticed something that I'd never noticed on all my previous trips to Port-au-Prince, and that were stoplights. I said, Joseph, stoplights in Port-au-Prince. Joseph said, Dr. Sider, the stoplights are a gift from the government of France. <laughs> and he said it with such pride. As we got closer to the stoplight, I, I noticed that the stoplights weren't working. <laughs> As is the case with so many parts of the world, and Port-au-Prince is no different, the supply of energy is infrequent. And often in Port-au-Prince, you'll get electricity between about 2 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, those times when you really need it. <laughs> a week or so later, Joseph and I were returning to Port-au-Prince. We'd been uh, out in some other parts of Haiti, and as we got into Port-au-Prince, I, I noticed something. Stoplights. Stoplights that had electricity and that were working. But no one was obeying them. Everyone was just driving through those intersections as if there were no stoplights. <laughs> stoplights. Today I want to talk about reimagining education in Haiti. In a sense, reimagining education in Canada. Stoplights can create barriers. Sometimes they can represent gifts, very well-meaning gifts, from the government of France in a context that perhaps they're not necessary. We're all probably familiar with the recent history of Haiti and the January 2010 earthquake that devastated much of Port-au-Prince. And the, the, the times I've been to Port-au-Prince and to Haiti since then, there's this massive outline uh, experience of government aid, non-governmental organizations, international governmental organizations. You see UN SU SUVs everywhere, Compassion International offices, Save the Children workers. And sometimes I have to pause and think, are we providing stoplights when they're not needed? Reese and Ed Reese, the two people you see in this picture are the ones who reminded me of this. As I've led workshops for school principals in Haiti over the years, in many ways, I have been taking stoplights, things that we have used in Ontario as school principals, and transplanted them to Haiti. I had been asked to give a talk to a group of school principals on the importance of integrity and honesty. And after I had extolled the virtues of being honest and having integrity as school principals and school leaders, Ed Reese, the gentleman in the blue shirt you see here, put up his hand and he said, Steve, all that you have said is good and true, but what would you do when the local thugs come to your school and demand a tax or some, and if you do not pay that tax, some harm will come to your family? How do you deal with integrity then? And as I stopped and thought about it, I thought, I'm taking curriculum information, leadership resources, classroom management strategies, assessment methods from a context such as Ontario, and taking them and expecting that the same would be true in a context like Haiti. I should have been wiser than this. I grew up in India, spent the first eight years of my life living in that con context. I've traveled and lived in South America, in Southeast Asia. I should understand. But it was important for me to have that reminder of stoplights. There's a Creole proverb, a Haitian proverb, that goes something like this. A fish trusts water, but it is water that cooks it. In many ways, I'd been like that fish. The water that I was living in was the water of my experience as a school leader here in Ontario. And it was water that was going to cook me. So it started a transformation 
And as I started to think about it, I started to realize that my colleagues in Haiti share a lot of similarities with my colleagues here in Ontario. School principals in Haiti and school principals in Ontario are not that much different. We often think about there as being someplace far away, some distant location, Haiti, and here being so close around the corner. We think about the global and the local, and we started to realize as we started to have conversations that the global and the local are not that much different, that we are becoming increasingly connected. Not a tremendously revolutionary thought. But as we started to think about it, we started to recognize how can we use technologies and tools that are available to everyone to bring us further and closer together. This came as a result of three kind of aha moments or vignettes. I recall driving down a road in Haiti, in a fairly uh, rural part of Haiti, and looking at these cell phone towers. This is about five, six years ago that this picture was taken. As I was actually driving on this road, I came across a woman who was herding some goats. And as I got closer to her, I realized that pressed to her face was a cell phone. Chatting away with someone on the other end of the phone. And then as I approached the school that I was giving a workshop for a couple of hundred principals, and as we got into the school, I realized that the generator that was powering the electricity for that, for that workshop was also powering about 200 cell phones. As principals, about every half hour or 45 minutes would come and change their cord as to who was charging their cell phone. Every principal in that room had a cell phone. Haiti is a country of about 10 million people. The most recent statistics are there's around 4.5 million cell phones. And we think it's the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. How is this possible? As I left the school, I saw another cell phone tower and another cell phone tower. And I realized that I had better connectivity in Haiti than I do in Ontario. <laughs> and this started a journey for us, where we started partnering principals in Ontario, university administrators, university faculty, and principals in Haiti with each other, and creating what we call a digital mentoring project. The Digital Mentoring Project connects people like Odney, who's a school principal in Port-au-Prince, Carrefour, just outside of Port-au-Prince. He connects with a principal in Waterloo. They're using Blackberries, thanks to a donation from Research in Motion. They're using the tools that they have in their own hands. They're using iPads. They're using playbooks to talk. Odney was in a conversation just yesterday with myself, a university faculty member from South Florida, a university faculty member from Oklahoma, and another uh, principal in Port-au-Prince as we are talking about a collaborative venture that we're in, engaged with using technologies like Skype. It connects people like Breesey, who I referred to earlier. Breesey is a business manager. She oversees a school system in Haiti of 70,000 students, 250 schools. And Breesey is connecting with school administrators here in Ontario and learning more about how to use Excel spreadsheets at the same time as teaching school administrators and business managers here in Ontario about the challenges of budgeting in a context like Haiti. Solect, who oversees a school system of 150,000 students, is connected with superintendents in Ontario as they discuss challenges with teacher and principal assessment. And Justin, who is one of the top officials in the Ministry of Education in Haiti, just completed his Master's of Education. I was a supervisor. It was a beautiful experience to see Justin complete that project. He oversees a, one of the 10 provinces or departments uh, in Haiti. When I was with him just a month or so ago, we everywhere we traveled, Justin had two armed bodyguards. A little bit of a frightening thought as we, we drove through the streets of Capetian in northern Haiti with two fairly burly guys with guns at their sides because he's trying to root out corruption in the school system, being encouraged by myself, by principals, by school officials here in Ontario as we work together through this digital mentoring system. 
it's amazing to me when I think about the challenges that Haiti presents. And yet a tool, something as simple as a cell phone, that allows people to be connected within Haiti and outside of Haiti. This picture is taken from one of the most rural schools I've been to in Haiti. It's in a little community called Carrefour Tintin. I love that name. Carrefour Tintin means crazy crossroads. <laughs> to get to Carrefour Tintin, you travel down on motorcycle or, or by horse, donkey, a gravel road for hours. And you get to this little, 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 little community, maybe about 20 houses and a school. It's not even a crossroads. I don't even know how they came up with the idea of crossroads, Carrefour Tintin. There's no crossroads there. It's just a single path. And yet here in the middle of nowhere is a school principal who's able to connect with other principals across Haiti and in Canada, brainstorming and problem solving in real time. There's another proverb, a Creole expression, actually, that I want you to learn today. And it's a reminder for all of us, and it's a reminder for me every time I see it, of the way we can make a difference. Sometimes only with something as simple as a tool in your hand, an idea in your head, and compassion in your heart. So if you could just indulge me with, let's learn this together. So I'll say it first, and if you could repeat after me. So, pity, pity. I'm going to actually add a little bit more in here than what you see up there, but pity, pity. Ti pai pai. Excellent. So pity pity ti pai pai. Pity pity ti pai pai. Zwazo fenish. What's the first? What do the first two words sound like in French? Pity pity. Pity. Right. Small. This expression. You don't know what you just said, do you? <laughs> this expression in English is this. Little by little. Straw by straw, the bird builds its nest. Pity, pity, to pai pai, zwazo finish. Little by little, straw by straw, the bird builds its nest. In little ways, straw by straw, little by little, straw by straw, we're building a nest in Haiti. We don't often hear about those kind of good news stories. We hear about the announcements recently about CEDA, the Canadian International Development Agency, cutting off all aid to Haiti. We hear about billions of dollars, and we go, well, what happened to those billions of dollars? And I'm here today to tell you that little by little, pity, pity, ti pai pai, zoazo fenish. Thank you very much.